Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is another episode of our show, The View from the Other Side, where we ask a fan from the opposition of the team we're up playing next to give us a kind of angle, a viewpoint from how things are going for them this season and how they feel about the upcoming game. And this is an, a complete honour. Of course, we've got Newcastle at home on Sunday, and I've only got with me the true Geordie. Geordie, how are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How's you, Barnaby? I'm very well. Uh, obviously, Spurs are 15 unbeaten, and you guys are coming off of your first kind of what I'd say big landmark win of the season too, two nil against Liverpool. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it was uh, it was a lucky win, but I'll take it. You know, I'm more than happy with that. Uh, I don't think anyone's seen that coming, especially not me. With the way Klopp's turned them around, I think that was a massive win. Just the confidence boost we need to take on you know, a team that's been undefeated for, since forever, practically, at this point. Yeah, that's right. So you said it was, you thought it was a lucky win. I watched it. I thought, actually, you know, McLaren, who's taken a lot of sticks, set up the team pretty well and uh, used your pace on the, on the counter-attack. I mean, we performed to the best of our ability, but, you know, when you look at you know, Daniel Sturridge goes through on goal, he completely misses that. Then you've got a disallowed goal that was world class, that should have stood. I think we've got a bit of luck, but, uh, you know, when you try, when you actually try for a change, uh, sometimes you get that. Yeah, and uh, obviously, I guess what all Newcastle fans will want to know is whether... Uh, well, and, and also everyone, I guess, will want to know whether this is going to be the corner-turning result for you. What do you think? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't. I just. I've seen too much weakness in in terms of men, mentality of our team. You know, we we collapse so regularly that I don't think that this is changing a great deal. But hopefully, it'll just give a bit more confidence that we can just get enough points to stay up. I I still expect we to collapse a good few more times before the end of the season. Like, uh, here's hoping, mate. Here's hoping. Starting this Sunday. <laughs> um, but uh, from the outside, you know, it's not it's not really any of my business. But I look at Newcastle, a big club, and I always think. You know, when, when Daniel Levy took over as chairman at Spurs, I think Newcastle were a Champions League club and we were kind of relegation fodder a lot of the time. And, and, and the change in the two clubs has been unbelievable. Uh, at, at this moment in time, I look at your club and I think, you know, so many foreigners. Is there a lack of a British core there for you? Yeah, exactly, mate. I mean, we used to be kind of where Spurs are headed right now. You know, we had an English core throughout, a British core throughout the team players like Jonathan Woodgate, Gary Spee, Kieran Dye, all the young players, Jermaine Jennings, when he burst onto the scene, Bobby Robson discovered him. Mm. Um, and, and, and then obviously Shearer and Bellamy up front. We, we had a really good, strong squad. And I think we've just lost sight of everything that made we're good in the first place because we've got people who don't really know anything about football running the club. And that's never a good situation. Um, whereas Spurs have obviously, you know, your team has got, a, I mean, you've got some foreign players, but it's a good core of it. British players there. I've been really impressed with Ali, who's sprung mm. onto the se uh, scene this season. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that these have got a great team. Uh, you mentioned, of course, uh, the owners not knowing a great deal about it. Obviously, Mike Ashley came out, I think it was before the last game of the season last year, and said he wouldn't be selling the club until you win something. Was that, you know, was that music to your ears? I somehow doubt it. No, I mean, to be fair to him, he did finally put his hand in his pocket this summer. Mm. But he just made the exact same mistake we've been making all the whole time. And it's nothing against the players we bought. I mean, they've obviously got some talent there. I've seen flashes of brilliance from um, most of the players we bought. But, it, you know, we needed players who knew the Premier League. We're not in a position to go out there and do what Manchester United do and buy Memphis. And, oh, well, it might work out, it might, might not. We're not in the position like that. We're a battling relegation, so we needed to get players in who were going to guarantee us instant performances in the Premier League. And, you know, we just gambled and this is the result, you know. Yeah, and uh, one player who was linked with Spurs a lot over the summer and ended up going to you was Florian Tovan. I saw that he came in off the bench the other the other day. Has, has he shown glimpses or, or is he just another one who's not ready yet? Well, to be fair to him, in his debut, I think he set three up and scored one. I was really impressed with him. And then when you put him in the Premier League... It's just giving the ball away too frequently, not tracking back. All, all of the what you'd expect from a young flair player from a different league who doesn't know the responsibilities that you can't just, oh, well, the ball's gone, never mind. You can't do that in the Premier League. A bit like what Lamella was like, I guess, when he first came to Spurs. Right. Uh, very much reminds us that. And I wrote Lamella off completely last season as just a waste of space. But to be fair, he's proven that he can turn it around. I'm hopeful that uh, Tovan can do the same thing for us. Yeah, yeah, Lamella has improved. I think he's he's still got a long way to go. But you're absolutely right. It's, it's a hard slog for those those young players coming in from abroad. So we'll go on to the manager, Steve McLaren, obviously taking a fair bit of stick for you. Is he the right man? 
Oh, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> There's your answer. it's, it's one of them, isn't it, though? I mean, we've we all seen what happened with England. We all mm. it, It's impossible to erase that from my memory. As much as I try and give the guy a chance and that, and um, some of his decision-making has left a lot to be desired. We have tried to play some football under him. And I, under Apoju and Carver, it was very much just route one, hoof it. Um, and, I, and Newcastle fans, we want to see us pass the ball around, which I appreciate, but... I think it's it's hard for him to be fair because he's working with a lot of players who just don't care enough about their careers, about the club, about anything. So um, I, I, the jury's still out on him, but I don't think he's the long term answer. I just hope he can get enough out of them to keep up this season. But am I right in thinking that he's been given a place on the board? Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how serious we are about that. I think that's just, you know, so that we can be seen to be a part of the regime that's making decisions and, you know, we'll, we can trust in him and all that, but it's he's just a name on a piece of paper to me. Yeah, Mike Ashley does love giving out eight-year, ten-year contracts, doesn't he? He did that with Pardew, is that right? I think that's right. Uh, I, I couldn't believe when we <laughs> actually managed to get rid of him, uh, genuinely, uh, after, after that, but, you know, fair play, things are going well in Palace, but... We've got our own problems at the minute. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes uh, players and managers and clubs just don't fit. I totally understand that. Exactly. Uh, so you've got, uh, obviously, a chance in uh, January to buy some players, bring more players in. Has he spent all the money now? Would people need to leave to come in? Uh, no. in, an, in an ideal world, would, would you have any more people in? Well, I mean, we haven't spent money in so long. I, I think I think we've kind of got this reputation that we are you know, financially strapped. I mean, Mike Ashley is a multi-billionaire We've got fantastic attendances. Um, we're, all, we're all getting the, the TV money. Um, and from what I know, pretty much every single summer now, we've got 50 million to spend every summer. Uh, that's what came out McLaren's mouth when he signed on the dotted line. So that sounds good to me. But I don't want to wait until next summer to spend it. I, I, we need these players in now. We need uh, serious players in who can get the job done. Yeah, you've been linked with uh, Andros Townsend a few times in the last month or so. Is that someone that would interest you? Well, I mean, but you, we've got no wingers at all. We have got, we, I mean, we've got Tovan, but for some reason we just don't have any faith in him already. It feels like £13 million wasted because nobody's trusting him to play on the team. So, you know, with Andros, he knows the Premier League. Uh, he can't get out wide because Musa Sissoko and Wijnaldum can do a job. They're sort of our two most talented players in the midfield, but sure. they're not natural wide men and they're getting played out there. So... The more the merrier right now. I'd take him, but let us let us know what you think of him, mate. I mean, do you think he'd be worth us getting, or is he not worth it? He's, uh, do you know what? He f he's frustrating, Andros, because you see him play for England, and you know he scores goals and he's fantastic. Do you know what? In a way, you know, I'm not a, a master tactician, but it seems to me that when he plays for England, Hodgson gives him more of a free role, and he tends to pop up in the pocket a little bit and takes his shots from there. Whereas whenever he plays for Spurs. He, he tends to play wide right and he'll come in and he'll come in on his left foot and he'll shoot and it you know inevitably goes wide or over the bar. And it feels to me like he needs he needs a Premier League goal or two to get him back on. And then obviously he had a, I don't know if you saw, he had this scrap with the fitness coach after one match because he was frustrated and not getting on in, in the on the team. Mm. And uh, I don't know, I like him. He's a Spurs fan. He wants to stay at Spurs. But sometimes, you, you know, you've for your own career, I think you've got to make a move and it, it might be time for him. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get him because I think he is talented. I, I think we can all accept he's got some talent there and uh, it'd be a shame to see him rot away on the bench. Yeah, that's right. OK, so just before we go, a couple of things about Spurs. You mentioned Ali and, and you thought Lamella had improved. Who else has kind of impressed you from, the, from what you've seen of Spurs so far this season? Well, I think the main, main worrying thing for me looking into this game coming up is your centre midfield. Uh, that is our weakest part of the team. Everyone focuses on the defence, but our centre midfield, Anita, Kolbach, uh, Teotti, they're not big, strapping, strong lads and will really struggle to pass the ball as well. So when you look at Dyer and, and uh, Ali, uh, Dembele, you know, those three are going to really probably dominate us. I think that's that's been key for you is having that this season and obviously sorting the defence that was helped uh, tenfold. And will you play two up front? Because did, did he play two up front at the weekend? Did Perez start? I'm not sure. No, it was CM de Jong. He got his second start in two seasons. Right. Um, which is a shame because I'm a big fan of Ayose Perez. I think he's probably maybe the... The lad out of our team who's got the potential to go all the way, you know, maybe he's play for a top team one day. Yeah. Um, and I want to see him play more because pace kills and he's we haven't got a lot of pace in the team as is. Um, but yeah, he, he he's uh, he's out for CMD young mate, so it looks like it's like a number ten and a number nine. Right. But I'd I'd rather see us 
drops this here because I don't think he's going to threaten you lot. I mean, he, he can pop up with a goal, but, you know, he's a terrible footballer. <laughs> Say it how it is, Jordi. Uh, don't hold back there. Uh, uh, Perez has actually been linked with us as well. I think he kind of fits the mould of our... We've got this um, scout that we nicked, the, the head of development that we nicked from uh, Southampton, Paul Mitchell. I think he... <laughs> Everybody he wanted that, didn't they? He, Who's he, developing that team? We better get it. Yeah, well, they've that, done so well, but... That tends to be uh, Daniel Levy's way. He'll see who Southampton have got and then steal them. <laughs> he, he would be a perfect fit for Spurs, to be honest, because I do think that the only weakness in your team, I've said you've got a good keeper, a good... Good back four, finally. The centre midfield looks great and going forward. Lamella's got his act together. Ericsson is top class. Kane is brilliant. You're just lacking a bit of pace going forward. And I think uh, Ayose Perez, is an up- he, he grafts his arse off on the pitch. Uh, good attitude and uh, he'd be a great sign. And hopefully you don't get him. No, I mean, I wonder if they'll put in a little sneaky swap deal attempt. Uh, probably we'd have to add a, a 10 or 15 million on top of that. Yeah. OK, so going into the game <coughs> Sunday, obviously it's at White Hart Lane. We turned you over there 4-0 in the League Cup last year. And then I think in the, the last time we played you, we won 3-1 up at, at St James's. What do you think in prediction-wise? Yeah, but the, the time, the actual last League game at White Hart Lane, we won. Yes, I, I remember, remember that. Funnily enough, I Tim didn't bring that Krul. up, mate. Funnily enough, I didn't Tim bring that up. Krul had the gr- it was statistically one of the greatest goalkeeping displays in Premier League history. I think he made yeah. 14 saves yeah. in that game. And I'm thinking... Do you know what? Hold on. While, while, you bring that. That, while you bring that up, Geordie, I was actually in New York watching that in a bar. And uh, the first half... I'm a very nervous Spurs fan and almost always, especially for some reason when we go 1-0 up, we went 1-0 up against you and I swear to God, like I was, I had no doubt in my mind that we were winning that game. You were rubbish. The first half of Newcastle were absolutely appalling. And then Perez scored a header, didn't he? And you turned it around and I had no idea how it happened. But so, mate, what you got in that game was Pardew. You got the <laughs> look, the, we had the look of Pardew and I'm not kidding you, we were awful in that game. Two lucky goals, and somehow we've got three points. And so many times <laughs> that season, I remember thinking, how we've stayed up? I've got no idea. I don't <laughs> even know. Um, so can you do it again? What's your prediction for this one? Um, it depends on which Newcastle turn up. If we try, we might, we might be able to get a draw at this game. Um, but uh, I'm going to say... Actually, I'll, I'll stick with my team. I'll have some faith. I'm going to say a 1-1 one, one draw again for Spurs after that West Brom game for you. All right. Good man. Good man. I'm going to say... I know what you mean. I do feel like if you keep it tight and, and narrow, then you could get a draw. But I kind of feel if we were to get an early goal, you might collapse like a deck of. So I'm going to go for 3-1 with you nicking one in the second half somehow. Yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of agreeing with you, but you know, you've got to, you've got to put on a brave face for these yeah. things, lad. Absolutely, man. Well, look, thanks, Julie. I appreciate it very much, guys. Let us know what you thought of our conversation and the view from the other side in the comment section below. Drop the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Come on, you Spurs, and thanks a lot again, Jordy. Cheers, mate. Cheers, matey. Hello, welcome to Spurverts Part Two. I'm still here with Craig and Emma. This time we got some transfer news to kick us off. The Daily Mail say that Spurs.